Roxo Media House. I think we know what to expect from each other. You know, like once we get like a certain play card or something, you know, I just kind of automatically look and I just know, like sometimes we don't even have to say words. Like I just kind of look and we know, like, okay. This is Frogs Today Daily. And here's your host, the voice of the frogs, Brian Estridge. Welcome into Frogs Today Daily here at the Morris Practice Fields, just wrapping up practice number 12 for the Horn Frogs. Pretty good day, too, today. Was not extended, meaning uh, this was not one of the longer practices. Uh, they wanted to get uh, back out on the field after the Easter break. We talked to Sonny Dykes, the head coach, afterwards. Said he felt like his team came back with a great mindset. Thought it was a really sharp practice today. Chandler Morris, by the way, a couple of three touchdown passes. Looked really good at quarterback. So he felt good about the return from the Easter break. They've got another one on Wednesday. Then, of course, the spring game coming up Friday night at 7 o'clock. little Friday night lights for you to wrap up spring ball as this team now still staying fairly healthy. Don't forget there'll be a lot of new faces uh, come fall here as well that will get an opportunity. But right now you got to like what you see out of the Horn Frogs. Today we talk defense primarily. In fact, we had a couple of different guys join us in the interview room. Mark Perry, the safety who returns, obviously, the transfer from Colorado. We'll talk to him. But Jonathan Bax joined us first. He's a freshman out of New Orleans. They got high hopes for him. This guy should be a senior in high school, enrolled early here at TCU. And we talked about that transition from high school here to the Horn Frogs. Uh, knowing I was going to come in early, you know, especially trying to get the hang of things, being an early enrollee, you know, I knew it was one thing on my mind. I just wanted to start fast and just do the best I can be, be the best I can be each and every day, just trying to line up in the right spots, you know, especially being a young guy, just trying to get my alignment right from the jump. And, you know, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it, you know, Coach Gillespie, Coach Creech, they lead me. And, you know, I'm just thankful for that. And also them guys on the linebackers, they, you know, they helped me, take any time with me. So I'm just grateful for that. Uh, the hardest thing was really, like, you know, school. I'll say that for sure. You know, school was a hard transition. And just transitioning to college from uh, high school, just the speed of everything, you know, especially going to day one with Coach Cousin, you know, Coach TB, those strength coach, you know, best in the nation. And, you know, just getting the feel of things, you know, seeing everybody fly around and just trying to, you know, make a name for myself as soon as I step in the door. So... It was really the hardest thing about that was just the speed. Well, in addition to arriving early, Jonathan Bax also had to make a position change. This was a defensive end in high school in New Orleans, now a linebacker. He talked about that adjustment on the de defensive side of the ball. It's new. I should say it's really new for me, and it's kind of been hard because there's a lot of rules and checks you have to play by, like when to know how to spell, when to know how to box, or, like what gaps you fill in. It's, it's, a lot of, I want, it's a lot of open gaps sometimes, but if you play it right, it's unstoppable, like, you can't run on it. It's just take a lot of discipline, a lot of rules, but like I said, Coach Gillespie and them, we got a smart group of guys, physical, so we can get the job done. Man, it's been tough because, like you said, I ain't have no snaps really at linebacker in high school, and just to come on a collegiate level, Power 5 in the Big 12, one of the best programs, really TCU is just, like, it's shocking for me because, you know, I'm just throwing out there, throwing in the water, trying to read guards, you know, everything new to me learning the key, uh, keys, checks, and just want to get out the box, want to get in the box. You know, it was very frustrating for me, you know, week one, but like I said, nobody ever belittled me. Everybody, you know, encouraged me and told me I was going to get it. You know, it was first week, second week, four weeks in the spring, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job, you know. Got thrown in with the one sometimes, you know, I'm blessed for that, thankful for that opportunity, you know, uh, Coach Gillespie trusting in me, and that's just show you how far they believe in me, how, how they trust in me. You know, nobody had hard feelings, you know, Johnny coaching me up, so I'm just grateful for that. Jonathan Bax came out of that good program, Edna Carr, down in New Orleans, and he talked about how he was prepared for this coming out of high school. Uh, Edna Carr helped me so much, you know, being a powerhouse in New Orleans because the coaches at Edna Carr, you know, a lot played Big 12, you know, had a coach in Minnesota, you know, a lot of coaches went to uh, colleges like Southeast and Tulane, so they know what it takes, and, you know, I'm very grateful for them because they bring the culture from college back to our, uh, high school, and they just feeding us and bleeding us, so... You know, when I come to college, the transition won't be that bad. And like I said, I think I caught on to it pretty good. And I'm just thankful for that because, you know, I always go back and tell them, like, look, everything y'all told me has been the same thing. You know, I just appreciate y'all for that, you know, not just not throwing me in the water and, you know, me not knowing what I'm getting into. And then finally, we had a chance to ask the young linebacker about this linebacking core and what he sees out of this room. Obviously, he feels pretty good about it. And at linebacker, we got so much talent and, it's really crazy to think how many guys you could just throw out there and just fly around. Like, start from Johnny, you know, you got Shad Banks in the middle, and Nandi, you know, coming from safety, that's a great addition for us, you know, more of like a coverage guy, but he's, he's catching the hang of things. And still got Jamoy out and Marcel, two 
dominant guys. So, you know, you got me and some of the young, other young guys coming in. So, just right there, it shows you, shows you how far and how deep our linebacker room is. Just you keep going on and on. And, you know, Coach Gillespie and Coach Creech, they use us very well. You know, they put us in the right positions. Then they just let us be free. You know, we play by the rules and they tell you to go after it and go get it. So, that just show you how deep the linebacker room is. Oh, and one more thing from Jonathan Pax. Why TCU? This is a linebacker that could have played anywhere in the country. So why do you pick Fort Worth? We find out here. Well, to be honest, you know, my recruitment was pretty tough. Like you said, LSU tried to come in late when I was, uh, you know, when I was wind up committing. But it started, I think, late June, last last June. I uh, came to camp. It was a little mini camp. Coach Buck invited me, you know, to uh, New Orleans and the He invited me, and he just told me come out and show my skills, show my best. Did what I had to do. Coach Gillespie and them, they fell in love. You know, I fell in love with them. They recruited me heavy. Wound up decommitting from Southern Miss like two weeks later. Chose my uh, commitment to TCU. And after that, I just knew it was home. You know, everybody loved me. You know, new recruits. It was like family just like that, even the linebacker room. You would think I've been hanging around with them for three years, and I've only been around them for like two months. So, you know, it's just a special place, special program. You know, Fort Worth, just a great city, great, full of great people. And I was just very blessed with being this opportunity. From Jonathan Bax to Mark Perry, we go the starting safety for the Horn Frogs. Had a great year last year. Where's number three, of course, uh, was a terrific part of this defense under first-year defensive coordinator Joe Gillespie. We talked about how further they are along now with this defense in year two. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we've been installing, you know, like the basics, and, you know, it's just kind of like a refresher. You know, you run it for 15 weeks, so, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like the back of your hand now. It's just kind of like jogging your memory, so. You know, I think it's been good, especially for, um, you know, obviously no safeties left. So just um, us being able to, you know, we're way further ahead this spring than we were obviously last spring because, you know, it was new, still learning it. So I think, you know, the communication has been a lot better and just kind of trying to pick up where we left off and, you know, work on things that we weren't so good at last year. Well, with that knowledge and understanding of this defense also comes faster play, according to Mark Perry. Yeah, you know, I think I think it's kind of shown already. You know, I think um, things that we didn't really understand last year, this year is completely different. Like the communication is coming out way faster. So, you know, just with us being able to know that we're able to help, you know, the young, obviously the younger safeties and the younger linebackers with the communication and just kind of getting them caught up to speed because, you know, obviously we've already played it for a little bit. You think about it, you got your three safeties returning as starters, but there's some young guys in that room that Mark Perry says – he thinks they have a pretty good chance. They look better than I did when I was when I was a freshman shoot. <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously I spend more time with the safety. So, you know, JJ is playing um, my position is behind me. So, you know, just kind of getting him caught up on, you know, things you need to know as a safety, reading formations, being able to communicate quickly because obviously you've seen our offense going kind of fast out there. So, just you know, being able to take check off that checklist like each play. Like, okay, get the call, see the formation communication, lined up, play the right technique, just different things like that. And then, um, obviously, Rando, um, he's been doing really good, too. You know, he's um, – both of them are further along than, you know, I would have thought as freshmen being early enrollees. And then finally, when Mark, we talked about the mentality of this team and how this group is so much different than last year's already. Um, I think we have expectations now. You know, obviously, last year being the first year, you know, you don't really know what to expect, learning new systems, a bunch of – new faces and stuff like that. But now, you know, you kind of have some familiar faces coming back from last year. Obviously, there's still going to be some new guys and, you know, some question marks in some areas. But, you know, I think we have an expectation, you know, after going that far into the season, you know, it's kind of like standard now. So we're expecting people to do their job. We're expecting, you know, if somebody's supposed to be there, they're going to be there. So, you know, just kind of holding that standard and having that expectation has been, has been different this year. That's Mark Perry, the safety for the Horn Frogs, joining us in the interview room after practice number 12. Coming up next, a former Cowboy was here to check out the Frogs. Now he's a head college football coach. I know what you're thinking. We'll tell you who it is when we come back on Frogs Today Daily after this timeout. At Higginbotham, we put people first. So we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. 
Texas-based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar-free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Welcome back into Frogs Today Daily, where we've talked long and hard about how the fact that uh, there have been a lot of high school coaches and players that have been out at spring practice this year under Sonny Dykes. That's the great thing about the transparency with this program. The access, they're able to see firsthand how this program runs practice. Well, a lot of coaches are taking advantage of that as well. We mentioned last week to Troy Calhoun, the Air Force head coach was here. Well, today he's a former Cowboy who's now a head coach in college. He's at Southwest Assemblies of God University down in Waxahachie. The terrific man he is. Defensive end, Greg Ellis. We had a chance to catch up with Greg right now. Greg Ellis out of practice today. Obviously, the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Dallas Cowboy, now the head coach. Uh, you know, you decided that you wanted to go down to Southwest Assemblies of God and make a difference. Give us some insight into the impact you've been able to make down there. Well, well hopefully I've been able to make an impact. Um, my first year was last season, and um, we won seven games, uh, made it to a victory bowl game. We didn't win, unfortunately, um, but we did make it there. Um, the mission for the school is, is Christ-led, and so I like to think that you know I'm bringing that element to the kids as well. And so love football, as everybody know, but it's about developing young people. And so certainly being at SAC, you'll have the opportunity to continue to do that. Yeah, and, and, Greg, you come out here today to watch a little spring ball with TCU. What are your takeaways from what you've seen out of the Frogs? I, I love it, man. Um, I think they'll have a great season this coming up season. Um, congratulations to them. They did a great job last year, Coach Dykes and his guys and his staff. And so they seem to be on pace to have another productive year. And um, um, my guys from SAC who's coming out learning a lot from it. Um, it's, you know, I grew up in a D1 program, of course, NFL, so I see it being a part of it. But sometimes my guys at a, at a lower level football, they hear it coming from my mouth, but for them to actually to see it, I think does a lot for us. Greg, you played, you talked about the fact you played at North Carolina for Mac Brown, one of the good guys in all the college football world. Very similar to Sonny Dykes. I think they've got the very similar approaches to the game. Yeah, they, they do. They do. Um, they're, they're like general coaches, if you would. You know, they're not necessarily the offense or defense or special team coordinator. They kind of sit and observe the whole thing and make sure all the needs of a football program is being met. And um, Coach Dykes, Coach Brown, both of them do a good job. Tell me some, uh, give me some sense as to how practice has changed over the years from your days in college to what you're seeing out here today. You, you know what? Well, I tell you one thing that's funny. Um, I see the uh, trainers come out with a bag of snacks, and I'm like, who are you taking that to? He said the players. I'm like, okay, really? Um, that's one new thing. Um, it, the, the football is still the football. Um, obviously, there's a lot of more gadgets out here. Uh, one company, I can't think of the name of them, but they have the juggler machine that's automated now. Yes. And so you can run, and that machine can find you and throw you the football. So um, – I hope TC doesn't mind. I'm going to tell Coach Brown about it because yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that can really enhance your football program. Greg, you've always been one of the good guys, and uh, we respect what you do. And glad you're out here at TCU, man. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank, thank you. I'm glad to be out here. That's former Tar Hill and Cowboy great Greg Ellis, now the head coach at Southwest Assemblies of God University, uh, checking out TCU practice here today. We had a chance to talk to Jamarcus McFarland, the Frog defensive line coach. He wanted to throw him in some drills. He said, he said, I got a couple of plays I know he can handle for him on defense. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Frogs Today Daily. Don't forget, another practice coming up on Wednesday and then Friday night, Friday night light, 7 o'clock right here for that spring game. We'll have all the coverage for you, uh, as always, at Frogs Today and Frogs Today. Com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Most importantly, subscribe to frogstoday.com and to our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us until Wednesday. Have yourself a great week.
Roxo Media House.